Hey everyone, so yeah, this is just a demo on the um, portfolio management system I created in Tekenta. It's a very basic portfolio management system. Um, it uses various other Python libraries like web browser, matplot library, um, and also pandas and SQLite. So if I just run the program now, you will get the login page. So let's load in. And yes, yeah, so you've got your login page. So this login page, you have to have the correct password and username in the uh, database. If not, you can register. So let's type in admin. If your password is less than four characters or the passcode is incorrect, you'll get the following message. So it's got that. So that's just correct. Passcode. The passcode you can find that in the code. So we create an account. An account's been created. Updates the database. So now we can actually log in. This is welcome admin. Click OK, and then this is here is the main dashboard. This has the main dashboard. <laughs> Sorry, nothing. So this has the main dashboard. So what you have is your account details, um, your nav, your balance, and the currency in GBP. This is all from um, Awanda. So what the system does, it makes API calls, puts that into a data frame or an array, and then presents that into a tree view. And this is the tree view widget that you see. So there's your account details, these are all the tradable securities and the bid and ask price from Oanda, each of those securities. And here are news headlines uh, from Bloomberg. So these are a bit outdated, but this is coming from the news API. Um, so I think there's an issue on their end as to why it's not um, the most recent, why it's not more recent. So if you double click on the link, it's got a binding that will then bring up the article for whoever to read. And then it's got the largest positions. Um, so it's like a pie chart. You have UK 100, corn, Australia 200, gold, and then sugar. And that's just the um, sizing. And anyone who's involved in um, operations on asset management companies or wealth management, um, you know there's position reconciliation. So this basically says that four, of, four out of eight of our positions have breaks. And I'll get to that later. So first things you can do is you can create um, buy and sell orders. Um, this here has its own validations. So say if you enter 20 and you enter the instrument that's not recognized, then you execute the trade. So firstly, the trade is not acknowledged. You have to actually acknowledge your trades. Then see, the um, instrument's not tradable, so you can't trade that instrument. So what we're gonna do, if we look at sugar, we're gonna sell 20 units, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're gonna sell 20 units of sugar. This is our actual um, position currently as it stands in the vendor. And then we're going to acknowledge the trade and then execute it. So the order's been cancelled, and the reason why is because the market's actually closed um, at this particular time. Um, so if we do find a market that is open, uh, we could do West Texas oil maybe. What we're going to do, we're going to buy, oh, sorry, we're going to buy uh, 50 units and acknowledge that. And this is our order fill. So as you can see, um, this execution time, the request, the account, and the order ID. So what's happened is um, we've bought the instrument. This is the instrument name, 50 units of West Texas oil at this price. So now if I refresh our positions, our positions will now be updated with West Texas oil. Cool. And then that also gets saved into um, the database um, for position reconciliation purposes. So then another um, thing that I have on this, um, application is FX algo trading. Um, this is not currently, it works, but it doesn't work as I want it to because I need to understand more about um, multi-threading, which I currently don't have knowledge on. So I just did a random currency pair like GBP ZAR, for example, which is why I've checked already. Um, I draw the intraday chart. So we just load up the technical indicators. So this is the um, intraday chart for um, GBP ZAR. And right now it's this is following the golden cross strategy. So what should happen is you'd enter the amount of units, like a positive or negative number, let's say it's a positive number, and it'll follow this um, golden cross strategy for a duration of time. So what happens is, is when the um, short-term moving average crosses and becomes above greater than the um, long-term moving average, you then enter what's called the golden cross period. And when it um, becomes below, like the direction changes, then you enter the death cross. So what happened here is it'll buy, and then it'll sell at this point. 
then it'll buy here and sell at this point then it'll buy here and then sell at this point and so on for this duration of time but what will happen right now if i run it is the screen will basically freeze and up until the duration is finished and then your results will show here so that's that one next is the um is the this is just a chart where you can view um, intraday prices or intraday, daily, weekly for the currency pair. And then you can check various indicators as well. So I can just draw this chart. See, so this is a chart with um, following the SMA and um, short term moving average. And then with Matplotlib, you know, you can um, rearrange the charts however you want. Um, so if I can, yeah, I can even remove the indicator and draw the chart again. And then there's the chart about the indicator. So this, sorry, this, um, these charts, the prices for these, they come from the Alpha Vantage platform. So this is the API that you can use for real-time pricing data. Um, this is because you, Yahoo Finance and Google Finance no longer provide the APIs, or I think they do, but it's at a larger cost now. So. I use these guys as a substitute and they're actually really good. Um, just a bit iffy on the technical indicator data, but for the most part, it's good. And as you can see, like, these are the latest prices at these particular timestamps. And then, yep, so that's that. And then next was um, trade bookings. So this is all in the database. So these are all our live trades as they currently stand. Um, anything of an order ID of like an actual number, like 368, 373, this is orders that have been actually executed via this market orders um, section. And then you think with C0001 or like C, starting with C, um, that is um, data that's been entered manually. And it shows you all the data for each trade and then it also has a um, cancelled section. So if it's zero, it means it's false. If it's one, it means it's true, so it is cancelled. So this trade here is cancelled at all of them. And you can also amend the states of that by here. So you just enter the ID, C0001. Um, we can uncancel the trade, amend status. It's updated there, changes have been made. So then what I can do is refresh and see the trades being uncancelled, but now I can just cancel it. Refresh again, as you can see, it's cancelled. So then, yeah, because I refreshed as well, you'll now see also that um, West Texas oil was showing at the trade price that we purchased it. And that is, um, yeah, basically matching the fill that we received earlier. So if I go back to um, trade bookings, and then if I, if I just want to enter a, ma a trade manually, um, so let's say I want to enter a trade for, I don't know, let's do sugar, let's go 50, and a price of, let's say, minus one, which is not possible. It will also come up with a flag here, print, so the price cannot be a negative number. But the quantity is nothing, insert. The quantity and price must be valid numbers, so there are checks for that. Let's say I'm going to do 50 units of sugar, and a price of um, 0 0.2. I insert that into the chart, I refresh. As you can see, it increments C0004. As we know, it's not a valid trade, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. It is refresh, so let's cancel. And then that basically leads to this. So this is view positions. So this is um, this makes API call from that Wanda platform. As you can see, the West Texas oil is not actually on there because I haven't refreshed. So I refresh it, and then there's the position from the Wanda platform. So this is our unrealized PL and um, from the trade so far. So then if I go to position reconciliation, I can then run a reconciliation. So this will compare the prices that's in the database against um, Oanda. And as you can see, for most of them, we match, um, but we have a few price breaks. The reason for these price breaks actually is because um, Oanda's average prices are showing, are, taking, are not taking into account the sales. Whereas the PRMS, the system in the database is taking into account the sales. So the difference between them should actually be the p &L. Um, so once the position's flat, um, you should no longer have a break, if that makes sense, uh, at a net p &L level. Yeah, so that was that. And then next was this one. Um, so if any of you are familiar with um, T-bills, they're priced in 30 seconds. So that would be is it'll be a price of, let's say, 110. iPhone 01, which is 110 plus 1 over 32. 
So you can convert the price there and you can get the conversion. And then this actually works both ways. So you can do zero points, um, so zero three, one, two, five. And it'll work, it'll get you the reverse. And it even works for the pluses. Plus, convert that, then you get this. And then if I that, zero, four, six, eight, seven, five, like that, you'll get the plus. So that is something cool I thought I'd just add. Yeah, so another thing is you can refresh the database instruments. So all the database, all the instruments in the data are stored into a database. Um, you can run the refresh, and if there's any new tradable instruments that the Wanda allow onto their platform, um, that will appear in this section here. Cool. And that has a message as well that tells you when it's been completed. So that prints to the terminal. Let's do a few others. And lastly, it's just a help section about. And yeah, you can just read up on that. Just details on what I've learned from this project. And yeah, so I've been learning um, Python for like six, just over six months now. And yeah, so far it's going great, but this project really helped me a lot in terms of um, getting the graphs of the, fund the, um, the fundamentals, object-oriented programming, using functions, and yeah, just other things like string manipulation, etc. So yeah, that's that. So yeah, feel free to um, save it down, fork, and use it however you want, or even learn from it somehow. So if I exit the application, then it closes. And it's finished. So yeah, thanks for watching.